G'day! If you're a beginner and you've never been camping before, this is a video for you. Or even if you are camping at the moment, but you're not sure what to bring for the next trip, everything you need and is still comfortable is all in this box and right here. That is everything that you need. How you going? Ronnie Dale, Four Wheeling Australia. This is all about camping out of a vehicle. If you're here for hiking camping, take a hike because this isn't for you. So this whole thing started with having a conversation with my sister. I received a text message asking to pick my brain over lunch about how to camp, camping gear you needed, tips, all that stuff. I figured why not make a video. So all this gear we're looking at, this is what I've got for her to start as a beginner camping because I'm not sure if she's going to keep camping. And this is what I started with. Pretty much most of this gear you see here is what most people start with. So I contacted some uh, brand outlets. The first one that came back to me happened to be these guys. So here we are, everything is set up. We're going to run through absolutely everything on the exterior and we're going to end up inside the tent at the end. Here we have a four person tent. Now keep in mind, four people tent, only two people camping in it. You'll see when we get inside the tent how much room there really is in a four person tent. It's kind of false advertising. If you want to fit four people in here, you've got to be pretty damn close. We're pretty good friends, I think. You have to sleep head to toe, head to toe. So you're gonna want your neighbor to have some good smelling feet, wash their feet. Regardless of that, two people in a four man tent, write that down, it's a $40 tent. When I started camping, it was out of the back of a Ford Falcon with a $30 Kmart tent. Look how small this tent packs up. That's why we didn't go for a swag. Also the price, which I just mentioned. Underneath the tent, we have a $15 tarp. This is a, I believe it's three and a half by two and a half meters, something like that. You want something that's wider than the tent itself because then you can put your your fongs, your jandals, flip-flops, whatever you want to call them, at the front here when you want to go to the uh, long drop or whatever. We're now going to talk about the four different pegs. We have a sand peg, we have a big boy, we have a slightly thinner small boy, and then we have the absolute waste of time pegs that you get with the tents. Right now we're going to talk about the sand peg. These are great for sand obviously and also grass areas up to this size. If you're in really soft beach sand, get those, the big ones, the really big ones. They work like a star picket. They are so good. They're surprising how much they can hold and they're surprisingly easy to pull back out afterwards, especially if it's soft sand. In this situation here, rocks and sand, it's okay if it's near a tree because the soil is usually softer. You'll find that this one will work as well and this one will work as well in this scenario. Get four of these, four of those, and four of the smaller ones, then you're set up for every situation because this tent takes four of each. It has four corners. What you also need is just your hammer from home. Don't bother with those plastic hammers you get at the camping stores, they are absolutely useless. You can't beat metal on metal, even with those good plastic um, sand pegs, metal on plastic works pretty good too. So don't waste your time or you'll be hammering that bastard in all day. We're now onto the big boys. This is what you want to use in this situation where there's a lot of rock around, the ground is hard. Big ones covered. Your smaller ones, they are okay for most situations. Out here on this hard rocky stuff, no good. I actually bent it putting it in. These are better for lawn, caravan park, stuff like that. That's where you use these ones. And they're quite easy to get out. And they're cheaper. Don't even waste your time with these. These are pathetic. To add to your peg bag, this is why I recommend you get a bag, get cable ties, zip ties. Chuck them in, because that's how you repair things out in the bush. Gaffer tape. If you've got a ripped hole in your tent or you've got a tent pole that's, that's broken, gaffer tape. 
or duct tape. That all fits in your bag, it's all in one place, you're sweet to go. Now if you do break one of these poles here, the quickest fix, cable tie one of your pegs onto there, duct tape around it. If you're strong enough, you can put a little bend in it quite nicely. Most people have no idea how they work, they just tie a bloody granny knot at the bottom. What you do is, you pull the bottom bit out, like so. That is the bit that you tighten onto your peg. There you go, it's tight. That's all there is to it. So you pull it through there, and that's what makes it tight. Like so. See it doesn't move now? Triple hole tab with the rope going through. As you can see, it's um, kind of doing a dance S-bend through it. What these are actually for, that knot stops it from going through this way. So you pull it tight here, and you pull it through the two bottom holes, that's where you get this bit of stretch here. And that's how you actually tighten it. And you just drag it tight. That's how it works. See it's nice and tight now. What camping's all about, it's having a fire. But guess what, it's fire ban, we can't have a fire. However, I will show you, this is a pretty cool fire grill, costs 20, 30 bucks, that's it. And I've had this for a long time. And even if they go rusty, you can clean them up. So if you only go camping once or twice a year, mate, just, just get your grinder disc or your, your drill with a bit of steel wool on it and off you go, she's all good. A compact shovel or a spade. If you do have a vehicle mounted spade or shovel, well then you're sorted already. But I like these, these go in the ground a lot easier than your long handle shovels. Then we move on to the bucket. The steel bucket, you can heat your water over a fire, you can heat water for a shower, you can go down to the river, carry water back. The steel bucket is a lot stronger than your plastic bucket, so this is stainless steel, which is even better. This has been used for seawater, and you can see it's only rusting where it's been pot riveted. So pretty, pretty good stuff. Will cost you a bit more. If you go camping, you really need a knife. This is just a $30, $40 knife, Opinel, Opinel, however you say it. A French knife, foldable knife, goes in your pocket. And what I'm giving to my sister is a Leatherman because she doesn't have a toolkit in a in a vehicle. Okay, she um she's a lawyer, so she's not a not a hands-on with tools. I got her this Leatherman because this is her entire toolkit. Now I wish I was keeping it myself because I like these and I still don't own one. So there you go. We have screwdrivers, we have knives, we have saws and everything in here, so she can probably get away with just this for the whole camping kit. So, chairs and esky. You don't need a fridge to go camping, but you do need an esky. This is a common one, you can use an angle one, you can use whatever the hell you want. Just make sure that you don't buy a cheap one. This is about a 60 to 80 dollar one, and that's where you need to spend a bit of money. The same with your camping knife and your Leatherman, you need to spend the money to get something decent, otherwise those things will fail on you pretty quick. This size Esky is about a 30, oh, here we go, there's a tag on it still. It's a 36 litre retro cooler Esky, there you go. <laughs> Sounds like an advertisement. The chair I'm sitting in is the cheapest chair I could find that was comfortable. It only has a 100 kilo weight capacity, so keep in mind you need to get a chair that, that fits you know, your weight. And that is why this one's so cheap, it can only hold 100 kilos. I'm on the limit of this chair, but my sister is about half my weight, so this is perfect for her. And her backpacker friend, she's about the same weight. For me, I would go for around about a $50 chair. Comfort does matter. Welcome to the kitchen and the table. Here's one of the reasons why I chose this table. Tables are not cheap, okay? It doesn't matter what you look for. Tables are not cheap, even your local hardware. This is a compact one, about the same price as all the other tables, but look how small it packs up to. Most people that camp, if they got a wagon or even a sedan, flat tables, they're a real pain to pack in. So this is one of those compact options. It's the same table that my dad uses. Bit of setting up, but it's not too bad. It's really light as well. We have two water containers. And the reason why I've chosen two water containers is if one splits, then you have a backup. 
go for a big one and a small one. So you top the small one up, and this is the one you, you carry around and use for whatever you want to use it for, because this one here is a bit annoying to walk around with. So that's your main. This is what you use out of. Down here, we have a bucket. This bucket fits all these utensils inside here. So that has that covered. This is where you can do all your dishes, or you can even use a bucket over there that we had at the fire. You can heat that bucket up and do your dishes in there. You can do a lot of things in that bucket. Over here, we have your simple enamel plate, pot, and cup. When we talk about cups, definitely get an enamel cup because you can have a hot coffee, you can have an ice cold rum, pina colada, a beer, Bloody Mary. You can have all kinds of things in these cups. However, if you do drink wine, bring your glass from home, but get one without the stem because they will break at camp. Don't get the plastic cups, wine tastes better out of glass. The lowest I could find is 40 bucks for a cooker. These cookers use throwaway gas canisters. On a two week trip, if you have five of these, you will come home with spare. About five for two weeks. Here's the frightening thing. I look for a wind deflector. The wind deflector, I can't find any that are lower than $40. So it's the same price as a cooker. So we are going to do what I used to do when I used to use these cookers. You get the lid and you keep it like this where the wind is. Just beware, the heat from that will possibly melt this box a little bit. You may not be able to shut it again. That's what's happened to me a couple of times. And some people watching this, it's probably happened to you as well. But this is the cheapest wind deflector you can get because you already have it. Moving on, when you go pots and pans, I recommend getting cast iron or spun steel. Don't get non-stick. Non-stick out in the bush does not last very long. That way you can use any type of spatula. This one I like because it has a fold, folded handle and I've got one exactly like this at home. But that's what I recommend, it fits good on here as well. Don't get a pot that's too big for these small lunchbox cookers either. If you have a big pot, then get a bigger burner. What you also need is a billy. This billy acts as your pot. That's all you need. These are about 20 bucks, 15 bucks maybe. You can boil water in it for coffee, you can boil water for soup, you can, you can do noodles in it, you can boil potatoes in it. You can do a lot of things with it and you can use it on your fire. This you can use on the fire as well. A non-stick pan does not last long on a fire. The toaster. Everybody loves toast. Well, most people do. This is a four-piece toaster. Believe it or not, it fits in this skinny little packet. You can get the single serving toasters, but they're just useless because you can only do one toast at a time. And usually when you're camping, most people want two pieces of toast and usually there's two people around, four pieces of toast. Doesn't cost much either. Packs flat as well. Always get long tongs because these can be used for the fire as well. You want to move logs in the fire. One thing I forgot to bring were welding gloves. Always bring welding gloves to camping. Not mittens, gloves. Then you can move stuff around with the fire as well. First aid. One thing I will say about camping stores is they do not do a decent first aid kit. First aid kits, you're better off going to your local ambulance sort of stuff that they use. Like for instance, in Australia, you've got St. John's. You know that that's gonna be good stuff. And then you also do have other brands like this one here. I forgot what it's actually called. This one is called, where is the name? Bear with me. <laughs> survival.net.au this is one of my favorite ones it has everything labeled so even a stranger who doesn't know your first aid kit and something happened to you they can open it up and go all right well there's the gloves there's the skin cleaning wipes here's the wound dressings you get the picture i do have another one which i couldn't find before i left this morning for the shoot so that's you'll see on your screen right now that is my second favorite, very easy to look at. Everything's color coordinated. It also has my snake bite kit in it. Insect spray and bug repellent. I'm not opening these up because these are for my sister and um, her backpacker friend. So I'm gonna keep them sealed because once you, you bust that seal and you start using them, 
They only last, what is it, 14 days, 15 days? Yeah, two times 15 day protection. I've tried these out, these actually do work. I would, I prefer these than spraying yourself with Bushman's or um, what's the other one called, Raid and Aeroguard. I just don't like spraying that crap on me. I've had this for two years in fact. This is the one I use in the Kimberley. Sand flies in the Kimberley. And you just change the refills here. They do last a while, they definitely work. Outdoor fogger, probably my favorite choice if you got flies and stuff in your tent. Just give it a whack with this, open up all the vents obviously, and they all perish pretty quick. Even outdoors when you're cooking, you kind of attract all the flies in for a period of time. You hit them with this, it takes at least 20 minutes for the flies to get back up to their maximum capacity again, if you want to look at it that way. Time to show you the lights that I've chosen. All right, I'll start by saying the one on my head is my favorite. I'll, I'll get to that. But the most common head torches are these. These came in, in a two pack, which is why I went for them. So it's pretty cheap. So you get like two hand torches because I think everyone at camp should have a hand torch and a head torch. So they've only got three functions on, on these, which is, you know, probably the same as most of them. Pretty cheap combo. AAA batteries, that's the only thing. You have to keep spare batteries on you. And the batteries you generally get with these things are generally quite not so great. The one I got on my head is an eBay torch. This is my favorite torch, $16 torch. So slightly more expensive than this lot here uh, when you consider how much you get. But it's got red light and it's got three different levels of bright and dimness. Lantern of choice. One of these that I got with all this stuff here. I've got one myself, which I've had for, I think nearly 10 years. These are pretty good. So what they are, you probably can't see me now. They're a torch and they're a lantern and an anti-bug lantern. Another cool thing on them, they have this little clip. So most tents you have a loop inside at the top, which you can actually attach this to. And then you've got your lantern above you. What I like about these ones, you have this light. You can't see me, I can just see what's in here. Your eyes need to adjust. This will keep the bugs out and is enough light for you to see what you're doing. And it's pretty good if you wake up in the middle of the night and you need to find your shoes or whatever, then you're not getting blinded like this. I'm going right down to very basic knowledge here. So for us that are frequent campers, we all know that head torches are for when you're cooking. So you stick it on your head and you're looking down like so that's what your head torch is for it's mainly for cooking and eating your hand torch is for when you're walking around you wouldn't want to use this when you're cooking because it's just it's just a pain um, your lantern is good but you need it up higher and even better if you've got like a, an old milk carton putting it over it it'll, it'll it'll diffuse the light a bit more and spread it out but you want it a bit higher and you kind of want it away from your food because this light will attract bugs and they'll bounce off the light straight into straight into your frying pan where you're cooking your sausages or whatever. That is a common mistake we see people do. So we may get someone, oh, do you want some sausages? They've got some leftover stuff and they've got bugs all over them. The other way you can get rid of bugs is by doing this and then only using your head torch when you're cooking. The red light is not very good when you're cooking because everything looks the same. You've got two tones, really. You can't see any colors. So you can't really tell if something's cooked or not cooked. So you're gonna need white light on your food. So what you want to do is just get that white light on, okay, yeah, yeah, and then turn it off so you don't attract bugs because they'll also fly to your face. That's about all I can talk about lights really. Everything else is pretty straightforward. <coughs> Top of the morning to you. So I slept in here last night on this side just to show you around. Four man tent. You can see it's pretty tight in here. Well, for two people, it's not too bad. And my backpack over here, forgot my pillow. So, I was using a towel. This is the other sleeping bag, a mattress. So there's two of these in here. These are about a hundred bucks. You can't go cheap on, on, on these in self-inflatable mattresses. The reason I went for these and not the thick inflatable ones is you don't have to worry about an air pump because that's something that you can forget. And this, you just, unscrew the valve which is here and it sucks in the air itself um, they're quite thin so if you do have big rocks underneath you will feel it like this one here's got a few big pearls under it this side's all right this is the side i slept on 
and this sleeping bag here is a plus 10 where is it plus 10 degree sleeping bag which means that in 10 degree weather down to 10 degree weather this sleeping bag is comfortable anything below that you could probably go down to five degree but you won't be comfortable you'll be a little bit cold uh, this is a zero degree but for Australian conditions especially in WA you wouldn't need anything that's warmer than a zero degree um, that's when the price starts going up so these sleeping bags are about 40 bucks I think so you can't skimp on your mattress you can't really skimp on the sleeping bag but about 40 bucks you can get a good one and that's about it um, for a $40 tent I was pretty impressed didn't flap too much it's been a while since I've been in a tent cheaper than 50 bucks um, but yeah had a good night's sleep there's probably a couple of things that I've left out and that is the toilet and the shower the reason why I've left those things out is because most people at camp will camp somewhere where there is a toilet facility um, showers you can get like these shower bags um, but look if you want more information on that stuff I've got other videos on chemical toilets showers and whatnot everything here will fit in this box as you saw at the beginning apart from the water containers and the esky and that of course but all this can easily fit in the back of even a two-wheel drive sedan it can fit in the back of a ute easy and you still got more space to bring more stuff now I've left shelters out because I wanted to make this as basic as possible but if you want a shelter and you don't have an awning off your vehicle then you can grab one of those annexes if you can fit it on your car somewhere on the roof rack or something but the reason why I left the shelter part out is to keep the cost down and most people if they have shelter they have it an awning off the vehicle any questions put them down below and any suggestions of stuff that you think that I might have left out that you prefer to bring that's not included here chuck it in the comments below now all the kitchen stuff I have left out the wooden spoon the spatula because I left that at home and of course the welding gloves as well which I spoke about so those kind of personal items and all your soaps and your clothes and all that that's stuff you're gonna bring anyway so I hope you learned something here subscribe over here patreon.com slash Ronnie Dale and here's another video down here. Cheers guys.